50 people wake up in a dark room. They are of different nationalities, ages and orientations. They have different fates and stories, but each of them stands in a small red circle and does not remember how they got here. After waking up, the group notices a small device in the center. It fires a strong electric current that kills a person instantly. Every two minutes, the machine comes into action and randomly selects a victim. After a few deaths, people realize that the room technology detects their own hand movements. And with it, they can control the choice of who dies next. The principle of survival is by voting, and the one with the most votes dies. There are also a few rules. You can't touch nearby people. You can't go outside your own circle, otherwise you will die. You can't vote for yourself. People who come out of the vote with the same number of votes, are highlighted in yellow, and then killed, unless someone changes their vote to affect the number of votes one receives. Throughout the film, people randomly or not choose who will die. Their deaths is based on differences in cultural and life values, until there is only one survivor left. At this point, if you are new to Scenes Recap, click the free subscribe button to never miss any updates from us. Also feel free to give us a like, if at all this plot would interest you. The movie starts with 50 people awaken in a darkened room. They're arranged in two concentric circles around a black dome. When they attempt to move, from their designated platforms or touch the others, alarms sound off. When someone ignores the warnings and leaves the formation, a beam from the dome strucks and kills them. Their dead bodies are then quickly removed. Thereafter, the device begins to kill them after every two minutes. People begin to panic, and a man attempts to calm them. He is shortly struck by the device mid-sentence, killing him. After several people have been eliminated, one person from the group realizes that the room's technology allows them to use hand gestures to vote for who dies. There are arrows on the floor that shows each person their own vote, but not visible to the others. Upon realizing this, the group unanimously attempts to vote for the dead. But there is at least one person who does it wrong and votes for someone alive. This could be a mistake or a disbelief in the idea of voting for the already dead. Now the group decides not to vote at all, until the timer elapses. This results in a tie, but someone still gets killed at random anyway. Maybe due to a panic vote since it only takes folding your hands to choose. Looks like death is inevitably made every two minutes, whether you decide to vote or not. Following another college guy's suggestion, of voting out the old people first, who he claims are due for death by age. The group though hesitant, agrees to buy more time to think, by deciding in advance to eliminate the elderly for the next death selections. The captives discuss on how they got themselves there, who could have abducted them, and why. A young man named Eric, remembers attempting to flee Los Angeles, and others concur. Eric says that he was pulled into the air, later waking in a red room with other humans. An old man, who is next in line for the selection agrees, saying he also saw and heard aliens. He narrates, seeing the aliens in dark green outfits, and hearing them speak in some language that sounded similar to Chinese. The disbelieving group eliminates him instead of listening, with the excuse that he was messing with their minds, to buy more time for himself. The plan of eliminating the elderly works, until the same young member of the group, aggressively targets a 52-year-old cancer survivor. Over the objections of people who do not consider her elderly, the group decides to eliminate him instead, for being insensitive. Moments later, the cancer survivor proposes that they should try to know each other. She says maybe that would give them a hint, to why they were chosen. A woman named, Beth, decides to tell her story first. But when the timer elapses when she was about to conclude her story, she gets killed. And someone from the group, notes that at least she didn't have kids. Several people began to say they recognize someone in the group. A man named, Craig, identifies the woman next to him as his wife, and that the group should spare her and kill him instead. He portrays the image of a caring man. But what if he is just lying? Another man, Bruce, also identifies the doctor he was having an affair with. A tattooed man, named Raoul, is also identified as a mechanic by a cop. On grounds of domestic violence, the former gets angry for being profiled, 
and angrily asks the cop what he is going to do about it. This births a tantrum between the two. In their arguments, Raoul reveals that the teardrop tattoo next to his right eye was for his deceased cousin who was 16 years old then, and that he was killed by the cops. Profiled as a guy with bad temper, Raoul gets eliminated after he admits to the accusation. It is interesting to watch how people choose who deserves to live and who does not. After several people are quickly eliminated, a young black man plays the racist card. He claims the process has become clouded with racism, and that the group is killing most black people to have an upper advantage on voting. Several others dispute this, while a cop goes on a racist rant. Sarcastically, he hints that they should feel sorry for the black guy, since he struggles more than they do, and that they are all the same. He adds that they move around to be handed things like they have earned it. As the timer elapses, he becomes the target and gets eliminated. The captives experiment voting for themselves, but it fails, since the machine does not allow anyone to vote for themselves. They then attempt to give one vote to the person next to them, in a clockwise direction. One man gives a second vote for a pregnant woman. Eric sees him and rescues her, by voting for him. This leads to a tie and the man is killed in a runoff vote. This tells, that the life of people who have a family, is valued more than the life of single people. This is because after the death of their parents, children become orphans. After several volunteers decide to take their own lives, by leaving the formation to buy the other's time. An atheist, antagonizes the theist who praised, the volunteer's faith. He insists that if at all there is God, then he does not care about them. And that the only God there is at the moment is the one before them. Since it decides who does and does not live, the atheist is briefly saved, after a vote tie with a woman that was selected for never giving any suggestions. But when he mocks the girl beside him, for having her boss, pay for her breast enlargement, he is spared no more and gets selected. Then comes a homophobic lawyer, he targets a lesbian and asks the group if she is someone worth dying for. He plays the family values card, and tells the group that the woman is a sin to their country. He gets selected and killed by the beam. The group realizes that one of the final two people left must not vote and be killed to render a winner. This creates a schism of two groups. One block, led by Eric, the marine guy, and the cancer survivor. Believes that everyone should sacrifice themselves to save a pregnant woman and a little girl. While the other block led by a bearded man and a rich man. Wants to eliminate them immediately as a threat to their survival. As they believe everyone is equal and no special privileges should be afforded. The husband and wife team initially vote with the bearded man's block. But the husband is forced to vote with Eric's block, when they threaten to eliminate his wife. Under interrogation, the couple admit that they concocted the relationship to curry favor, resulting in the elimination of the husband. Eric's faction incurs heavy losses but eliminates the other faction, leaving only Eric, the pregnant woman, the girl, and a silent man who has never voted. Eric theorizes that aliens have used the process to learn about humanity's values. After the silent man is eliminated, Eric manipulates the girl to simultaneously sacrifice themselves. As the girl dies, Eric instead votes to kill the pregnant woman, to the surprise of both, leaving him in a tie with the woman's unborn child. Eric votes to kill the child, becoming the lone survivor. In the epilogue, Eric awakes in Los Angeles. On the street, he sees a group of other survivors. They are looking into the sky at alien spaceships, in which, apparently, the same games take place. From this movie's open ending, we remain unknown to the purpose of this game. It can be said that the film has no beginning and no end. This does not seem like a finished story, or a cautionary tale. This is just an abstract sketch, that encourages viewers to put themselves in this very circle, and reconsider their attitude towards others. Only one thing can be said for sure. No one has the right to decide who should take his life in the first place. What are your thoughts, on how this movie ends? Drop your comments below. If you would like to see more scenes recap like this, click subscribe, to never miss any of our future updates.